Hey guys, we have critique videos again. So years ago, anyone who wanted to would just send me a video on Facebook and I'd give them tips, and every once in a while I'd pick someone to make an entire video for. As you can probably guess, the work was too much and I can't do that anymore. So now I'm on Patreon, and if you donate to help support the channel, then there is a tier that gets you yourselves critiqued. But starting now, I'm gonna be picking people to do video critiques on. So for the first scramble here, you have orange and blue ready to go like that. And then before that, you put green on top of orange and then did this. And then you have red here, so you did red last. That was a pretty good cross solution, which is seven moves, but you started by facing blue and had to do a cube rotation. So for those of you watching, if you're interested, I want you to try the scramble and do the same cross solution, but do it with better finger tricks to avoid a rotation. And if you're up for an extra challenge, find a cross solution that's only six moves long. So the same cross solution with better finger tricks would be facing orange first and then doing it like this. That way, all you have to do is regrip your hand afterwards and then the rest is, is easy. The six move cross solution is a bit harder to spot, but what I notice is that when I insert red here, if I do this later, green gets set up right away. So I can do green last. And so how I would have done this cross solution is by doing orange blue like that into the back and then align the cross such that red goes in correctly relative to blue and then insert green. Now, after the cross, you did this pair first, which is good. So you rotated, put it here, and then you regrip your right hand. Most people regrip the right hand here because they're about to do U2 this way, but you actually were going to do U2 with your left hand. This, that's what you ended up doing. So in this case, you don't need to regrip. Although it does seem like you may need to regrip over here to insert this, like that. Although you should actually change the way you do U here so that anytime you have front slot F12 cases, you never lift your thumbs off of the front. Well, except after your, your turn starts, but to start every F12 pair, any front slot F12 pair, you start with your thumbs on the front. For back slots, it would be good to do that, but sometimes it's very difficult. So for back slots, sometimes you start with them on top, but for front slots, usually you would start with your thumbs on the front. And that means you have to learn some special U finger tricks like that or like that. And you can watch my finger trick tutorial video there, which covers everything you have to know. So now coming back to here, I think what you noticed was this corner back here and then didn't really pay attention to this one. And since you're probably just starting out with look ahead, that is fine to just fixate on one corner. Although um, once you spot this corner and know that it's going to end up in the top layer, what you should do is try and spot its corresponding edge, which in this case is very difficult because I can't see it right now. So when you do this, so I want you to try doing some slower solves and completely eliminate this habit, which is dragging a top layer corner along as you look for its corresponding piece, because this is kind of like the slowest form of cube rotation because you have to recognize every time you rotate. If you knew it was at the back and immediately did that, I mean, that's way faster than doing two very slow rotations. So anyway, once you were facing this side, what you did was regrip, take it out like that. And so I'm not gonna comment too much on this, but remember, just check out the finger tricks tutorial to avoid this sort of regrips. And then uh, this one, you regripped again. All right, then you did this pair next, pretty straightforward. And then these two. So everything else was pretty good. So now for your two look OLL, you started with wide F, R U, R prime, U prime. And then instead of F prime here, what you did was because the double layer F prime is a little awkward, you did it by rotating to here and then doing R prime. The double layer F prime is important because what happens when you rotate the cube is your left hand has to readjust its grip, which can cause mistakes in the next algorithm along. But if your left hand always stays in the same place and your right hand just does whatever it wants, then usually that's a better way to go about things. It's harder to notice the effects of it now, but the faster you get, the more this will make a difference. So in general, try to keep your finger trick simple and don't do cube rotations if not necessary. The second solve was super straightforward, so we're not gonna talk about too much here, but I just wanna talk a little bit about the cross. Uh, the cross, very, very easy. You just did D prime and then insert blue, insert green, insert red. Um, there is a case to be made about inserting red before green because it saves this corner, but that's not all that important. The thing I wanna talk about here is because the cross is this easy, you should at least look a little bit into first pair because that's something you'll have to do eventually and you don't have to like figure out the entire first pair, but it can help to at least find a corner that you're going to focus on. So in this case, 
um, from here, if you look at this one and see D prime L, that's gonna end up back here. And the edge actually ends up right next to it. So this would be a really easy case to track because only two moves create this pair in its final position. Um, you could look at other ones as well, but this is just one corner and approximately where the edge is is like what you should do on really easy scrambles like this because it probably didn't take you 15 seconds to find out how the cross was going to be done. So for this scramble, make sure you follow this one, not the one from the original video, because that one was followed wrong. So um, here we have these cross pieces, and we uh, notice that green and orange, like that, get solved correctly, and it also takes out red while you do that. So red ends up on top. So what we have here is two cross pieces correct, one incorrect, blue doesn't go next to green. So then in this case, when you get one incorrect, what you should do is the replacement technique, which I talk about in my advanced cross tutorial, where you insert this one on top of here, which is what you did, but then what you did afterwards was you inserted blue over here using a cube rotation to do R2. Now instead of that, what you should just do is align the cross and reinsert this one. So the replacement technique generally goes, you insert uh, the correct one on top of where it should go, taking out this one, and then just align the cross and reinsert this one. So for the first pair, you did these two. So you pair them up like that. Then now you have to rotate to insert, and anytime you have to rotate to insert, you should rotate so that it's in the back slot. That way you have open front slots and you can see things like this, because uh, you don't want to be looking at something that doesn't matter. All right, then you have these two, but what I noticed you did right away was even though this one was really easy to spot and actually would have been a slightly better pair, you, after inserting this, immediately did you. So now it's hard to see this one, but it's easy to see this one. So I noticed this habit of yours where after inserting a slot, you tend to do a U move or a cube rotation or something that just basically increases your field of view somehow. This is a common habit, and I think the way you're doing it is actually not very good because when you do the U moves, you tend to miss obvious things right away. This exact sort of situation happened in the first solve as well, where you did a U move and then it was gone but then you were able to find something else. The reason I think doing U moves instinctively can be fine is because sometimes it has to do with your look ahead. And you'll notice that in some situations where you don't see certain pieces, you know that by doing a U move, you might find something. But if you always do it, then it just becomes an extra unnecessary move. So try to avoid doing it sometimes, maybe do some slow solves and see why you do it and when it may be detrimental to your solves, like in this case. All right, so you did this pair next. Then again, you insert it into the front, better to insert into the back like this. Uh, although you did get a bit lucky inserting into the front, you can see this right away. But even though this happened right away, immediately you instinctively did something, and this time it was a cube rotation along with a U prime. So you did it from here. And uh, the way you did it actually was like this to start with, and then I think like that. So there were two or four total regrips in there actually, because two times you had to regrip down. Um, so that could be better if you learned the better finger tricks, which I already talked about. And then we have this. So last slot inserting into the front slot usually is good, but uh, just for other slots, insert into the back is better. Um, this OLL, um, I know you haven't learned full OLL yet, but maybe just learn this one because this one actually is just the first half of a Y perm. Anyway, you don't have to learn that now. So you did um, this thing and then second look of OLL and then H perm. So the rest of this is pretty straightforward. For this cross, you notice you have blue here and then green here. So you set up green to go here, and then afterwards you would have red go on top of it over into this spot. So how you did it, the finger tricks, was like this, rotate, and then like that. Then you just did orange last. So as a challenge for you guys watching, is there a way to do green and red in the exact same way, except with better finger tricks so that there's no cube rotations at all, and have white on the bottom when you do it? Hint, you have to face orange to do this. So how I would have done this, um, ignoring this pair, I'll talk about how you can save this pair as well, but how I would have done it is like this. So F prime with my ring finger, and then all of that. 
So just briefly here, if you see a pair like this, it can be good to take a little longer on inspection to figure out how you could have saved this. But how I would save it is um, just by doing this first. And then you have this green and red case, which you can do like that. All right, and then um, when you insert orange, what you can just do is do R prime here first, insert orange, and you end up with this on top. So that is a bit complex. What you can do instead is just insert orange and ignore this at the same time. And then you just have this pair to start with, which isn't as good of a pair to start with, but it's still pretty good. All right, so again, the way you did the cross and then inserting orange here, D2, uh, the first pair you did was this one and this one. Um, I will admit it's very hard to find a good pair to work with here because uh, just from this angle, there's not really anything good. What you did again was the cube rotation check, cube rotation check, there we go. It is better to look at the back than it is to do this slow cube rotation thing. Um, so anyway, how you did this one uh, was like this and then insert into the front. Remember, you should insert into the back. Uh, then for this, what you did was like that to pair them up, which is good. Next, what you should do to insert to avoid regrips is L, U, 2, L prime. This is actually the best way to insert it and the fewest moves. What you did was U prime and then insert into the back, which means um, you could do it like this to avoid a regrip, but you ended up doing it like this, which caused that regrip and an extra move. All right, this pair, really interesting. You, um, It's hard to see it from back here, I guess. So what you did was this, and then you did that to pair it up. Once you see it from the back here, you should still do it from the back like this to avoid two rotations, and that would go like this. So anyway, back to the way you did it, like this, insert into the back, then we have these two, so pretty standard, like that. All right, two look OLL, and again, I think you rotated to do the last F like that, uh, and then this OLL, and um, U perm. So for this U perm, the way you ended it was with R2 prime, I recommend using R2 instead, and I'll show you why. So we'll get to the end here. And so right here, this is the way your hand should be gripping the cube when you get to this last R2. And if you do R2 prime, you end up like this, which is unnatural. So what people naturally do instead would be that. Um, but if you do R2 from here and just use your index finger for the last part of the R2, you actually don't need to regrip. This is a very small tip, but it is just a little bit faster to do R2 instead of R2 prime because it requires that extra regrip. So for the most part, your F12 solutions are pretty efficient, but the number one thing you should work on is finger tricks. And this actually goes for a lot of people around your level. I know that when I was even faster than 17 second average, I was doing this regrip a lot for F12 because I didn't know any better. So uh, go watch the finger tricks video. Um, it talks about everything you need to know to avoid regrips and when you should and shouldn't regrip. So after working on your finger tricks and getting all of the F12 cases back into your muscle memory, which shouldn't take all that long, then you should start working on look ahead. I don't recommend working on it yet because if you like do an F2L well case and then because you were regripping, if you have to unregrip and then you can use that time to find stuff. And right now that is like a little excuse for why um, why look ahead is not that important yet. But if you're able to do all the F2L well cases without regrips, then your pauses will end up looking larger. And then that will give you a better reason to actually work on look ahead. So I think finger tricks do come before look ahead. Also, once your finger tricks are done, when you start practicing look ahead, I recommend you especially go through slow solves where you do not do this and you do not uh, do the cube rotation thing where you drag a piece along with you. If you run into a case such as corner here, I absolutely cannot find that edge, then think about what could you do to be able to find that edge without doing anything that would be a bad habit. So here you would just look at all the pieces and think, okay, um, I don't know what that one is. I don't know what that one is, but clearly it's not any of these ones. And the piece for this doesn't have yellow on it. So it has to be this one back here. And then to take it a step further, you can also deduce what orientation this must be in so that you can figure out exactly what case it's going to be and then solve it efficiently, um, which you can pair it up like that. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all next time.